On the phone line with us right now, friends of the Michael Bajan Show, go way back with these gentlemen. Tavis Smiley and Dr. Cornell West is in the house. How you gentlemen doing? Hey, Michael. How are you, man? Man, what? the name of this book is scary, The, the Rich and the Rest of Us. Ooh. <laughs> hey, George, how are you? Everything is good, man. So tell me, why, why this title, Tavis? Because it's, it's the reality that we're living now. We live in two different Americas. We always have, but now... Uh, poverty threatens our very democracy. Poverty is a matter of national security. I mean, imagine this. One out of two Americans, Michael, one out of two of us is either in or near poverty. That means 150 million people in this country are wrestling with poverty, number one. Number two, one percent of the people in this country own and control 42 percent of the wealth. And here's the last stat. The top 400 individuals in this country, 400 people, own and control more wealth than the bottom 150 million people. That's crazy. So the gap between the have-gots and the have-nots continues to widen. Our very democracy is at stake if this divide continues. Let me ask you this, uh, Dr. Cornell West. Uh, as you all know, the Senate couldn't even come to terms on whether or not we're going to raise the interest rates on uh, student loans for, for young people, man. And now I'm reading a story about PhDs receiving That's government right. assistance has tripled. What, what is going on, Dr. West? Yeah, brother, we live in a system, and Brother Tavis and I are trying to bear witness based on the legacy of Martin King and others. We live in a system, though, brother, what is rigged toward the rich. Right now, investment bankers have received over $10 trillion of welfare, but they can't provide mortgage relief for homeowners with $700 billion underwater, and we got a program of $28 billion in place. So $28 billion is fine, but we need $700 billion. you got students who can't get a loan without significant interest, but the same investment bankers get interest-free loans since 2008. Mm -hmm. So it's the hypocrisy, the mendacity, the double standards are overwhelming, and we have to have a love for poor people to tell the truth about their suffering, even as we attempt to deal with, with our present situation and make some political judgments. Tavis, for the folks who are listening to this show, how does this apply to them? How can they apply what you all are saying to what's going on in their lives? Uh, the last time we talked to you, I think, Doc and I were on a poverty tour last summer. Michael, we went to 11 states, 18 cities, gave up a good part of our You time. were so kind to have us, so kind to have yeah, us, brother. You were, you were oh, my pleasure. To, we, were, we were delighted to be on, but, but I, I go back to that right quick because there were a number of people in national media, indeed some on black radio, who made a mockery out of us taking this tour. And now that these numbers show that so many Americans of all races, colors, and creeds are in poverty, Dr. West and I, I think, did the right thing in retrospect by going on this poverty tour, trying to put a face on poverty trying to understand what the Great Recession has done to the American people and why it is that African Americans have been hit hardest. The bottom line is we weave the, no we weave the stories, the narratives of some of the people we met on this tour, Michael, to answer your question, are weaved throughout this book. So one, you get a chance to see that you're not alone in this struggle, number one. Number two, we talk about the fight back. This isn't just a book about uh, the damnation that poverty has brought up on the country. It's also about the fight back and how people can, in fact, come out of poverty. Thirdly, we debunk the worst, the ten worst lies told about poverty. We take those lies on in this book. And then finally in the book, we lay out 12 things that we believe, while Doc and I don't have a monopoly on the truth, there are 12 ideas we lay out, Michael, for how we can get serious about reducing and eradicating poverty in this country right now. Dr. Cornell West, you, you know as well as I do that Dr. King got in trouble when he started talking about poverty. Do you do understand that people are going to attack you when you start talking about something that is just so systemic in this, in this society? Well, you're so right, though, brother. And the thing is, it goes with the territory because it's not mm -hmm. just about Martin King, but me and Brother Tavis. We are followers of a first century Palestinian Jew named Jesus that we're Christians and bearing witness to the poor and the suffering of the poor means you either headed toward a cross or you headed toward character assassination. Mm -hmm. And that goes with the territory. But we do want to say this, too, in regard to our dear brother Barack Obama. We know he's much better than Mitt Romney. We don't want to right wing take over of the White House, but we also want a Barack Obama who is sensitive to the pressures as it relates to poor people. He needs to listen to Marion Wright Edelman rather than Tim Geithner. We're putting pressure on the brother, and black people need to understand that because they see our critique as somehow weakening him, whereas we're trying to put pressure on him so he tilts toward the poor and less toward Wall Street. Hey, Tavis, I remember you and I talked a while back ago, and you said you got to love black people to serve black people, right? Yeah, you know, that comes from Cornell West. That's West into the core. Okay. Leadership <laughs> is simply this. You can't lead 
if you don't love, you can't save if you don't serve. And and I'm saying that to say, I, I wonder, and this goes for white America, too, Does do things have to get even worse for us to realize we need some drastic changes? I certainly hope not, because I don't yeah. know how much worse it needs right. to get. One of the reasons why you see the Occupy movement coming back so full, so full force this spring, and I'm glad they've laid out the framework, Michael, of the Absolutely. 99 versus the mm-hmm. 1. They're accurate about that. But again, when you look across the country and one out of two of us, I mean, think about it. Look to, if you're listening to Michael Bayston right now, look to your left, look to your right, unless, of course, you're driving. That's one <laughs> That's you, right. one you, one you, one you. Every person you look at to your left or your right, there's a good chance, no matter what color they are, they're struggling with poverty. And so the reality is that I don't know how much worse it has to be. I say all the time, and Doc and I argue in the book, People either wake up because they see the light or because they feel the heat. And I don't know how in America right now we are not feeling the heat that poverty is putting, quite frankly, on all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, the name of the book is called The Rich and the Rest of Us. Uh, They talk about the top 10 lies about poverty and, of course, 12 poverty changing ideas. Hey, gentlemen, looking forward to seeing you guys out there around the circuit and and having you back on to talk about this because it's going to get a lot uglier before it gets better. Michael, thank you for your work. You know we love you. Thank you, guys. Dr. Cornell West and Tavis Smiley, hey, man, doing the work that a lot of people are afraid to do. Speaking out against power is never, ever easy.